My passion for salamanders has allowed me to stumble upon an almost otherworldly secret that nature holds dear. A little known event will soon occur under the cover of night towards the end of winter's abrasive cold touch. What seems like a simple puddle will soon undergo complex seasonal transformations. As nature prepares this location to become the center point of a massive migration event. How's it going everyone? The Salamander Man here back with another video. And this video is going to be a very special video for a very special salamander. A salamander that is not quite rare and yet it still leads a very secretive lifestyle making it an uncommon find and leaving only a small window of opportunity to see it out in the open. And of course, I am talking about the spotted salamander. And so where I am at right now is a very well-known breeding site for the spotted salamander and many other amphibians where they actually close down the road for the safety of these animals that will cross the road from one end of the forest to get to the other side where the vernal pool breeding site is located. And now as a quick note, do not do what I'm doing right now, walking the road during the day when the road is not closed down for the migration event. This is a public road and cars do come through here. So again, do not walk the road when the road is not closed down during the day and especially at night when cars cannot see you. This is just to give everyone a brief look at this surrounding area where I will be coming back to during the migration event when they do close the roads down for the salamanders and the frogs to cross the road. And so with that said, there's a trail right here that actually leads us down to the very first vernal pool site that we will be checking out when the migration event starts. And I suppose the first question is, what is a vernal pool? And why are vernal pools so important to the spotted salamanders and the other amphibians that gather here to breed. Vernal pools offer a critically important habitat for not just salamanders and frogs that gather here, but also birds that may even prey on the eggs of the amphibians that are laid here. And so I'm going to tackle the importance of a vernal pool and how it changes through the seasons. Now this behind me, is a vernal pool. And this vernal pool in particular is actually quite large. Many vernal pools aren't even necessarily as big as the one behind me right now. In fact, what I'm going to do is go to two different locations, the vernal pool behind me here and a second location. And the second vernal pool isn't even nearly half the size as the one behind me. And so what exactly is a vernal pool? A vernal pool may seem like a simple puddle, or in this case, due to the size of the one behind me, maybe even a pond. But in fact, it's not a pond, and it goes through many complex seasonal changes and offers a very important breeding ground for many amphibians to gather and lay their eggs. Vernal pools are temporary bodies of water. They are depressions within the ground that fill up with accumulated melted ice, snow, and rain during the winter and early spring seasons. And due to this, the vernal pools lack permanent predators such as fish. And because there are no fish here, the amphibians can gather here safely to lay their eggs. Now, in this case, the vernal pool behind me actually retains water throughout the summer season, making it a great spot for frogs to reside even during the dry months. Vernal pools offer a very unique habitat and many amphibians and other animals depend on the critical location of the vernal pool in order to not only survive, but to start the next generations of their own respective species. And not only amphibians, but there are many other animals that depend on the vernal pools, such as birds that may gather here to also prey on the amphibian eggs and even the larvae that are born here. And so why the focus on spotted salamanders? Well, spotted salamanders are totally dependent on vernal pools such as the one behind me in order to breed and lay their eggs. And right now it's summertime. They are spending most of their time underground, hidden away from people and predators. 
So I'm going to set out to search for this incredible animal and visit two different vernal pool locations. The one behind me here, I'll come to visit this one once the migration event starts and we'll actually get to see the salamander cross the road out in the open and make its way to the vernal pool. Then we'll get to visit the second location where we will actually get to see the eggs develop and even get to take a look into the life of the spotted salamander larva. So let's fast forward through time now and watch the vernal pools change through the seasons. The season of winter looms over the vernal pool as the cold temperatures suppress the area. Underneath the ice, clues begin to emerge, hinting at the secretive event that nature is unwilling to reveal at this moment. I'm here at the very first vernal pool location, and it's the middle of winter. It's quite cold, about 35 degrees right now, and the breeze coming through just makes that temperature all that much more bitter. But I'm here to scope out this area in order to get a better understanding of this vernal pool, a better picture of what is going on here exactly, because it's easy to see how winter has transformed this once thriving vernal pool, abundant with frogs and other wildlife, into really an entire forest that seems almost lifeless now. And it may seem that way at a glance, but there's actually much more going on here than meets the eye. So I'm gonna make my way around the vernal pool a little bit more so we can really get a better understanding of just how incredibly huge this body of water is. It's gripped in ice now, but there's much more to the story. At this point, I'm almost on the other side of the vernal pool, but we can see here just how far back this body of water stretches deep into the forest and we really get a better idea of just how massive this vernal pool location really is and as i said a moment ago this entire forest in the vernal pool seems almost lifeless and almost is really the key word here because upon further inspection underneath the ice the vernal pool is still teeming with life and we can see that life is present and even abundant under the ice, and these organisms will eventually become the food for the spotted salamander larvae that hatch here. Now, as I said earlier, vernal pools aren't even necessarily as big as the one behind me. The next location that we're gonna go to isn't even close to being half the size of this vernal pool here. And the salamanders, frogs that all gather here will actually make this journey to migrate to their breeding site every year. The continued existence of many of the amphibian species that gather here is totally dependent on the critical location of the vernal pool, including the next generation of the amphibians that are born here, as they too, once they are mature enough, will come back to this very location, participating in an annual migration to breed and continue the generations of their species as well. So it is critical that these locations are protected as habitat loss is one of the biggest reasons for population decline in many amphibians, including salamanders. At the moment, this location is seemingly cold 
dead and quiet. However, in a matter of time, the entire forest is going to spring to life with spotted salamanders making their way to the vernal pool and choruses of many different frogs will fill the air. The season of winter, once relentless, begins to approach its end, and its frigid touch slowly begins to lose its grip. However, I make my way to another vernal pool, somewhere deep within the forest, away from prying eyes. This second vernal pool, kept hidden by nature's embrace, is carefully being nurtured to become the cradle for larval salamanders and frogs. Now, with the break in the weather this winter, I figured it would be a great time to finally come scout out the second vernal pool location. And up here, it's still quite cold, so most of the snow has not melted yet. But this long stretch of frozen water is going to be the second location that we come to visit where I'm going to check out how the eggs of the spotted salamander develop and eventually even see the larva of the spotted salamander and we'll get to see them grow as well. Now the second vernal pool location in particular is actually made up of smaller scattered vernal pools. So not just that long stretch of water that we just saw, but even this small depression right here, you can see there's a little bit of water pooled up here and even further up ahead, there's some more water and all this snow and ice is going to melt when it starts to warm up, filling this up with more water and all these scattered pools are going to be used as vernal pool breeding grounds for the spotted salamanders and other frogs that gather here as well. And so with that said, this site is actually not a well-known site, so I will not be giving out the location of this area because unfortunately there are too many people that would come out to a spot like this and collect the salamanders for a profit. So that's definitely something that I want to avoid to protect the animals that gather here. And with that out of the way, it's March already and it's still pretty cold up here, but it's gonna be warming up very, very soon. We're gonna be looking for some specific conditions, warm, rainy nights, mid to high 40s. And we're gonna be going back to the first vernal pool location where those conditions are actually gonna drive out the spotted salamanders and frogs to cross the road. And we'll actually be able to witness them make their way to the vernal pool. And in time, this area is going to look radically different. It's gonna be overgrown, very swampy looking, and it will be difficult to come back here, but it's gonna be well worth it. So there's a lot more to come in a very short amount of time. And so back here at the very first vernal pool site, almost all the snow and ice has melted away at this point. And with the wave of warm temperature coming through this area for the rest of this week and the week afterwards, there's even a possible chance of rain. And with those nice rainy warm conditions coming through, 
this may give us a really great window of opportunity to finally see the spotted salamander cross the road and make its way to the vernal pool. And so at this point, it really is just a waiting game, hoping that the weather conditions do remain consistent and finally trigger some movement for the migration event in the coming weeks. And the migration event doesn't just take place over one night, it takes place over the course of a few weeks to maybe even a month or so, depending on the weather conditions. And so we may get some small movement on the first night, and then on the second night, we may get a massive movement of a big number of frogs and salamanders. So it's really dependent on the right weather conditions of warm, rainy nights. And hopefully that weather does pan out very soon. A wave of warm temperature continues to replace the cold bitterness of winter. And the vernal pool is no longer suppressed by ice. And with this location no longer frozen, this body of water awaits the arrival of secretive forest inhabitants that will make their way under the cover of night. A system of clouds begins to creep in and eventually overshadows the vernal pool until they finally release the long-awaited rains, stirring the spotted salamanders to finally emerge after the long winter. Alright, I'm finally here at the very first vernal pool site and it is finally time the roads are closed down for the start of the amphibian migration. Now, this road is completely blocked off from front to back for the safety of the amphibians that are crossing from the other side of the road to make their journey to their vernal pool breeding site. So this is going to prevent any amphibians from getting run over by any cars that may have come through here otherwise. So it's really great that they're able to protect the animals that are making this journey. Now, I'm just making my way down this road trying to see if I can spot anything crossing from one side to the other, and it's actually pretty quiet today. I've heard a few spring peepers and some wood frogs, and really not much else. And it's actually really not surprising because even though we have these nice rainy conditions at the moment, it's actually quite cold. And it's probably about 43 to 44 degrees right now. So if there is any movement, it's not really gonna be the big movement that I'm looking for. So I'm still gonna keep an eye out and I'm actually gonna make my way to the vernal pool and just see if there's anything going on around there. As I said, the amphibian migration actually takes place over the course of a few weeks to a month or so, depending on the weather conditions. So it really would be optimal for it to be just a little bit warmer. High 40s would really bring out these animals under the rainy conditions that we need. But I've heard a few more spring peepers and I'm just making my way down to the vernal pool and we may actually see something down there. Down here at the vernal pool, I can actually already hear a large number of wood frogs that have gathered on the other side. And this is a really great sign because with the large number of wood frogs and a few spring peepers that have made their way already, that means there is a chance that the spotted salamander has started making their moves as well. And tonight is not going to be the big night. The rain has actually started to slow down significantly and the temperature is dropping. So that means I'm gonna have to come back for the big night. But this means that the migration did start and I can actually see a spotted salamander right at the edge of this log in the water. And so this is what I wanted to see. Those spotted salamanders in the water were a really great sign and the official start to this salamander migration. And actually, check out what we have going on right here, making its way to the vernal pool. There's a spotted salamander right here on the path. Now that is a really great start to this migration. And this is actually a male spotted salamander. We could tell by the enlarged cloaca right underneath the tail and near the hind legs here. And these bright, vivid yellow spots 
is what gives it its name. Now, the spotted salamander is considered a mole salamander because outside of breeding season, it actually spends most of its life underground. And due to this behavior, the amphibian migration presents the best window of opportunity to see this really beautiful salamander out in the open. And so this is a salamander that's not rare by any means, and yet it leads a secretive life, whether it's living underground outside of the breeding season or making its way to the vernal pool under the cover of night. Now I'm back at the amphibian migration and this is night two and there are actually a lot of people here tonight. So it's a very popular location, very well known and tonight is definitely the big night with most of the movement that has been seen so far. So I'm gonna make my way down to the vernal pool and see what's going on down there and get a peek at some of the action. And so right here on the path, another spotted salamander is sighted and this is actually a female and we can see the sheer size of this animal full of eggs making her way down to the vernal pool. The way we can tell this is a female is the lack of an enlarged cloaca, unlike the male that we saw during the previous night of the migration, and the females also tend to grow larger. Now, when she gets down to the vernal pool, the males will court her and leave behind a spermatophore, and if successful, she will collect it in her cloaca, which will fertilize the eggs. Now, with the sighting of that female spotted salamander, it's pretty easy to conclude that there's going to be a lot of activity in the water here. And the sound of the sheer number of spring peepers and wood frogs is already a dead giveaway. Judging from the first night of the migration, there were already plenty of male spotted salamanders in the water. But at this point, there's bound to be other females in here already as well. And so, we're actually gonna take a look underneath the water and witness the secretive lifestyle of the spotted salamander during the amphibian migration. Beneath the water, male spotted salamanders have gathered in large numbers, swimming frantically through the debris-filled vernal pool in search of a mate. In competition with the other males, the spotted salamanders leave spermatophores as they push and shove at a chance to fertilize a female's eggs. The number of males tends to outweigh the number of females, and they continue to nose and nudge one another. And if a male comes across another spermatophore, it may even deposit its own on top. In the presence of a female, a male spotted salamander will attempt an elaborate courtship display. If successful and the spermatophore has been collected, she will eventually swim away to lay her eggs, where she will attach them to branches or vegetation or some other debris. So we just got to see some of the seemingly chaotic mating frenzy that takes place underneath the water during this massive migration event. But there's still a lot more to see back out on the road, so I'm going to head over there now and actually see some salamanders and frogs make their way to the vernal pool from the other side.
The Night of the Migration was incredibly successful. We got to see so many different species of frogs making their way to the Vernal Pool, including spring peepers, wood frogs, green frogs, and oddly enough, even a gray tree frog, which was really interesting because they actually come out during the summer months. So it was pretty interesting to see them out during the colder season. And of course, we even got to see the salamander that we were searching for, the spotted salamander, make their way down to the Vernal Pool breeding site as well. But this journey to find the spotted salamander is not over yet. There's so much more to the story of the spotted salamander that we're going to start from the beginning, head over to the second Vernal Pool location and see how the eggs have developed and even take a peek into the life of the spotted salamander larva. The long-awaited welcoming warm temperatures of spring have finally arrived and traded places with the harsh bitterness of winter. And as such, the creatures of spring have begun to make their appearances. With the seasonal rain and melted snow, the vernal pools in this marshy area have been bolstered to shelter the amphibians that will soon call this place home. Upon arrival at the vernal pool, I've located many different clusters of spotted salamander eggs. I've set up a small container in order to get a better look at what will soon develop into the aquatic larva that will inhabit this vernal pool. And so, I return these eggs to come back at a later time to observe them yet again. And at this point, I've come back about a week and a half later, and the embryos have begun to take on more of a distinct shape. Another week later, and the shape of the head and body are revealed. Until finally, I return on the fourth week to find that these embryos now closely resemble a larval salamander. And perhaps in about two weeks, they will begin to emerge. Now that we've seen how the spotted salamander eggs develop, at this point, it's June, and the salamanders have all hatched into aquatic feather gilled larvae. So this means that they are living an aquatic lifestyle in the vernal pools, and they have external feathery gills. They will be developing their front legs first as they grow and their back legs last, and they have a paddle-like tail that makes them suitable for the aquatic environment that they live in. And in time, their tail will become less suitable, less paddle-like for an environment like this, as they begin to morph into the terrestrial adult that we got to see earlier during the migration. So at this point, I'm actually heading back to the second vernal pool location. Also, now that it is so much hotter outside, the vernal pools are starting to dry up, and some could even be dry altogether. So this means some of the larvae in perhaps the more shallow vernal pools didn't make it if the vernal pools are dry already. And we could see many different sized larvae since larvae grow at different rates. And so that means we'll be able to see the differences between the larvae in terms of their body coloration depending on how big they are, if they have their front legs only, or perhaps both their front and back legs. So we're going to get a really great look at the life of the spotted salamander larva. All right, I'm finally back at the second vernal pool location and we can immediately already see just how much this place has changed with all the weeds that have grown in and even the vernal pool has actually shrunk just a little bit due to water evaporation. And that tells me that the spotted salamander larvae that are in here are well on their way, growing in size, and will eventually, or even perhaps soon, morph into that terrestrial adult salamander that we got to see earlier. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you all a really good look at just how different the spotted salamander larvae are from the adults. I have a small container that I'm going to set up with water and I have a small net so I can carefully scout out the vernal pool and really give you a good close-up look at these really amazing and 
very different looking animals with their feathery gills which they use to breathe in the water and that paddle like tail that makes them very suitable for this environment and soon as they morph into their terrestrial adult stage they will lose that paddle like tail and those gills will shrink away. All right, I've got my container full of water set up here. You can see that the water's got a brownish tint. So this is actually water that I've collected straight from the source from the vernal pool here. And that is because even though I could have used maybe spring water for a much clearer look, in order to reduce stress on these salamander larvae, I didn't want to expose them to a potential change in temperature with some other source of water. So I figured it would be best to use the water straight from the source and reduce as much stress as possible to give you all a really good look at these really wonderful animals and the secretive life that these animals lead, especially in an area where a vernal pool like this is tucked away out of sight from everyone else. So I'm gonna actually scoop around very carefully with my net and see what we can find here. All right, so I'm gonna take a scoop over here very carefully. Perhaps we'll pull up a tadpole or two, maybe a dragonfly larva, and hopefully that spotted salamander larva. And we got some debris in there, and that's fine because that's exactly where they're going to be hiding. And, oh, here we go. This is perfect. So there is a tadpole in here, but we also actually have the spotted salamander larva already. So I'm going to let go of the tadpole. Now, as to what type of frog this will turn into, I can't say for certain, but knowing what is in this immediate area, we have spring peepers, chorus frogs, wood frogs, pickerel frogs, green frogs, and bullfrogs, and even gray tree frogs. Now, in this vernal pool, in my experience, I have seen mostly wood frogs and pickerel frogs. So I'm going to say it's one of those two, but let me let go of this tadpole, and then I'm going to actually put this spotted salamander larva into that container that I have, and I'm going to see if I can find a few more so I can give you all a really great look at these animals. Spotted salamander larva of many different sizes reside in this vernal pool, and they have grown significantly since I last observed them as eggs. These salamander larvae are equipped with external feathery gills that allow them to breathe underwater while their lungs develop. And their paddle-like tail allows them to traverse their aquatic environment. Unlike tadpoles, these salamander larvae will develop their front legs first as they grow, and then their back legs will follow soon after. However, these salamanders are growing at different rates. Some of the larger salamanders have begun developing their back legs, while many others still only have their front legs. And while the vernal pools that these salamanders live in provide an abundant source of food, these larvae are still predators and will go after anything that moves in front of them. A notable difference in size between one another may also mean that a larva could potentially become a meal itself. As these larvae grow and continue to compete with one another, their lungs also continue to develop further, enabling them to rise to the surface for an occasional gulp of air. And as they near the time of metamorphosis, their gills will start to shrink and their tail will become less paddle-like making these animals no longer suitable for the water. They will soon transition to land and will have to adapt to a completely new lifestyle. But these salamanders will have to grow fast. Time is against them. As the days grow hotter, the vernal pools begin to evaporate and will eventually dry up, leaving behind only a shallow, muddy spot where water once stood, along with any spotted salamander larva that did not make the transition to land. Now that we've seen the life of the spotted salamander larva and how they develop over time, that brings us to the close of the spotted salamander journey. 
we even got to see how the vernal pools change dramatically throughout the seasons. And we got to see the spotted salamander make its amazing migration to the vernal pool breeding sites, especially during a time where it is so cold, you wouldn't think that an animal such as this would gather in such large numbers to make such a journey. But over here in this dense forest by the second vernal pool, there's still a whole lot to see even during the summer and under the right conditions it may still be possible to find the spotted salamander and today it's actually wet it just rained the night before so before i close out the video i'm going to have one more look around and see what i can find and so i'm going to just start off by flipping a few different logs and small branches and see what I can find around here. And I'll start with this one right here. This looks like a pretty good size. It's already loose down at the end over here, so it should move pretty easily. And it's nice and moist too, so this seems like a good start. And here we go. A spotted salamander, a juvenile. And that is a nice way to wrap up this documentary. So, last but not least, I'm going to break out my other camera and give you all one last look at the spotted salamander.